Let's talk about Rise of the Ronin, a game that both of us are playing. You're a certain amount through it. Scott Telford, I am kind of obsessed with this game. And look, I can hold my hands up when I'm wrong. Yes. You know, for the past few weeks, we've been doing podcasts, we've been doing videos where we've been talking about the Rise of Ronin. Mm-hmm. And I've, I've continued to say it looks a bit spotty. It looks a bit derivative. I don't know if it's going to be as good as people want it to be. Now that I've actually played it, mm-hmm. I can eat my words, man. I think this thing is incredible. You know, I've only, w- w- this preview period is, um, you know, I think it's, it was it was funny because in the, in the embargo we got, it was um, advised that the mission that you could get up to was about 100 to 120 minutes into the game. Okay. It took me six hours to get there <laughs> in a good way because right. I was just exploring around the world. Like I did not expect to love this game so much even mm. when it started because honestly when it when it first kicked in before you get to the actual open world mm-hmm. um i just thought oh well i've played this before this mm-hmm. is another um game from this studio like neo like wall long and i just thought I- i've played it you know it, right. you, you do these kind of missions where they're, they're really structured. You're like on a boat and you're kind of sneaking around. You're fighting these enemies in the kind of Souls-like neo way that you would in their previous games. Mm-hmm. And I just didn't think I was going to get along with it. That's then, where I am. Right, And okay. it's like, I think it has a bad intro or like yeah. a, a quite a stock kind of intro where it's like you said, you're being railroaded. And obviously it's a way of teaching you the mechanics. It's very tutorialized. Um, but it does give the impression that this is the game um, in a way that it clearly isn't because you get to the open world stuff. Absolutely, yeah. I just think it takes a bit too long to kind of convince you in that regard. Mm. And I hope people kind of don't bounce off it when they jump straight in because essentially you get three missions right at the start Mm. that act as those tutorials. Like you get a a mission that is just pretty much pretty much ripped straight from Neo that introduces you to the mechanics. Then you get that boat mission, like I mentioned, Mm -hmm. and then you get into the boss boss fight and then the open world kind of um, arrives. But once that open world arrives, Scott Tilford, (laughs) it is is amazing. I think, you know, I had a lot of issues pre-launch about the visuals and yeah, they're not the most stunning you've ever Mm. seen. If you've played a Neo, if you've played a War Long, you can kind of gauge the type of um, production value in terms of those visuals that you can expect to see in the rise of Ronan, mm. but I think it has such a strong sense of art direction. Like, like just, it's picturesque in places. Yeah. You know, kind of how in Ghost of Tsushima, you would just be hitting that photo mode over and over <laughs> and over again. Uh-huh. I kind of felt the need to do that here, where I was just looking at the vistas, I was walking through the blades of grass, and it was just doing a lot for me. The, the lighting in the game, I think, is really good. Uh, the way it bounces again off that, off that grass that goes through the trees mm-hmm. is amazing. I've been skipping between frame rate mode um, and qual- well, it's essentially a quality mode, a graphics mode. And I, I kind of, I love both. I There's love the f- third one, I think, where you can turn ray tracing There's off. There's a ray tracing yeah. one, which I kind of, I thought hit the performance a little bit too much, mm. but there is a, a day one patch coming that hopefully addresses that and mm. kind of makes it a bit more stable. But yeah, I thought graphics mode just looked quite nice, but obviously the fluidity of 60 frames per second mm. was amazing. Mm-hmm. So I overall at this early stage, I think it could be the best game this developer has maybe Team Ninja. ever made. Yeah. I want to drill down on the gameplay stuff because I feel like <clears throat> going into it, like we talked about it at the beginning of the month when we did our like rundown of everything that was coming in March. And I did think that the um, some of the recent gameplay demos that they put out looked a little bit ropey, looked yeah. a little bit like the animation was a bit too snappy in a bad way. Like it looks like it could do with a bit more fidelity or whatever. Um, under the assumption that when you actually get hands on with it, it'll just be really responsive and it'll be really good chunky combat. And it is. I think that's the thing um, when you're doing those encounters where like it reminds me of a bit of Sekiro, but it's not that it's not anything that Neo hasn't done before either, um, but it is very timing based on the counters that yeah. opens people up to finishers. You get these really gory, immediate finishers um, that are really cool. I think there's a feel to how fast and snappy everything is that w- some people will say feels outdated. And yeah. I, I think it means that the game doesn't look like a demo as well, but when it's in the hand and you're moving that well, and it is that snappy going from stealth to action, countering and everything else, that does bring it together, which yeah, is like, well, that was always the hope beforehand. Absolutely, like it feels great to play. Mm. And it is indebted to, to I think War Long, um, which introduced a more parry focus focused approach mm. to the combat, and this definitely has that kind of like War Long slash Sekiro mm. sort of influence to it. Where yeah, you are focusing a lot on parries to get your enemy's key gauge down, so mm. that you can hit them with a with a triangle attack, which is essentially like 
what you do in Sekiro, uh, where you know it flashes red and mm -hmm. then you do essentially a finisher and, and really hammer their health. Mm -hmm. And it just is kind of snappy in that way. And it feels great to hit those parries. And it feels great to get that finishing move. And you're cutting off arms and you're cutting off heads. It felt amazing in Warlong. It feels amazing here. Mm -hmm. But it's definitely more action focus this time around it's it's more concerned with style than i think it is with difficulty mm -hmm. you know both warlong and neo were definitely souls likes and this definitely also has some of that dna in it you still essentially you know sitting at bonfires which respawn yeah. enemies but it's closer i think to jedi survivors approach to that mold than a dark souls you know it's, it's yeah just having difficulty levels which you have this time around mm -hmm. you have your basic easy medium and, and hard like that just kind of changes the demands and it doesn't mean it's not a difficult game it is there's definitely a lot of challenge mm -hmm. there if you want it but it's it's more accessible and it's more focused on the kind of thrill of that kind of samurai combat than yeah. getting your ass kicked by a boss. <laughs> I feel like, um, yeah, there's the Soulsian influence. There's also like, to me, there's like a big Assassin's Creed influence yeah, where yeah. it's like, you've seen, we, everyone got tired of Assassin's Creed over time. Not that they stopped selling altogether, but by the time we got to Valhalla, it was like, okay, what is this franchise anymore? Like how much are we capitalizing on combat? How much are we going to stealth? Everyone's a bit of sick of tall grass, like et cetera. Um, and then, you know, you saw um, Ghost of Tsushima like do an Assassin's Creed, but in like a more kind of mature way, the combat was better. Um, and the thematics about the storytelling was better and the, um, there was like an evolution of it in a way. And I feel like the it's almost like if Assassin's Creed was a genre and not just one entry in a genre, then this is an evolution of that mold. Yeah. Or, or, or yeah. a snappy kind of um, Team Ninja's take on that mold. Yeah, you know what? It's, it's a tough one to talk about because some of the criticisms that we had pre-release were that it looked a little bit derivative. It looked mm. like a bunch of games we'd played before. And now having played it, I can't say that's not true. true. It is. Like if you played Ghost of Tsushima, you would be very at home here. If you played Assassin's mm. Creed, you would be very at home here. If you played other Team Ninja games, you'd be very at home here. It's like an amalgamation of a bunch of different things. But that doesn't mean it doesn't do them well. No. And I think it's its polishedness and it's, you know, just how good it feels and how well everything is knitted together. Like you don't really mind in the mm. same way that you didn't really mind that Ghost of Tsushima was definitely cribbing from the Assassin's Creed um, the playbook mm -hmm. and this is too. It's funny you mention that because when I'm playing it and when I got to like the first city, which is just before the preview period ended, mm -hmm. like I, f I just thought this is what Assassin's Creed could be. Yeah. It doesn't have the production values of a modern day Assassin's Creed. You know, it's not as visually as st stupendous. It doesn't <laughs> have necessarily the animations though the animations are good doesn't might not even necessarily have the scale but like in terms of what that franchise offered mm. this kind of picks up that baton and kind of carries it through like when i was yeah. on the rooftops in this city and i was performing these assassinations i just thought Oh, I've missed this. This is really good. <laughs> I'll tell you what it reminds me of is like an era in um in game design more like the 360 era yeah. where it wasn't it's kind of the stuff that um like the rock stars, the naughty dogs brought in, like that kind of leaden approach to controlling a character where it's like it's not you push a direction on the stick and then they move in that direction, as opposed to just the immediacy of what like a, a lot of older games used to have um before that um attempt or approach was made to make everything cinematic. Yeah. Um and I think this, like it has cinematic flair to it and there's a lot of style and everything else. Even the game's opening cutscene is like phenomenal. Yeah. Um with two characters clashing as a tree bursts into flames behind them. But like that whole approach, gameplay forward, like I go on about that all the time. But I love stuff that just like gives you a set of mechanics and lets them all work together very well. And as long as the responsiveness is there, like you can go from a counter that lops a dude's head off straight into aiming at the next guy with L2 R2. Like that chaining stuff together thing yeah. is an old is an old school feel now. It is kind um, of, yeah. But it's welcome, like it's so welcome. And honestly, I think at least in this early stage, it, it might grind on me over how many hours mm. the game is, but at least in the early stage, it also makes the kind of repetition of some of the side content feel a bit better because right. it's not like a lengthy um, investment to say liberate a bandit camp because of course this has a bandit camp uh, <laughs> structure. I love a good bandit camp game. if it's fun but, to take them out. But I've enjoyed doing everyone because it is fun to take mm. them out. And when you liberate that area, it doesn't feel like it's been a slog. It's been fun to do because right. the combat is that engaging and you have like all of these different options, weapons you want to try out. Mm. And the game showers you with loot, at least again in this early stage, right. which is really, it makes doing those repetitious side 
quests kind of worthwhile because you're always going to get or usually mm. get something good out of it. Like I've swapped my weapons so many times already. I've swapped my armor so many times mm. and there's always been something there to um, reward you alongside the combat, which mm -hmm. is kind of just good in and of itself. I wonder how those are going to sustain themselves over time because mm. I can already see them like repeating. And like I said, that's fine because they are fun to do, but mm. I've pet a lot of cats. <laughs> I've, I've prayed at a lot of shrines right. and I've liberated a lot of bandit camps, but the main missions definitely kind of in the side missions, the character specific missions, mm. which I've only done a few of, um, kind of make up for that because, you know, you can ignore that stuff in a way mm -hmm. and you could just barrel forward to do something a um, bit, bit more um, narratively consequential, yeah. sizable. I, I want to um, mention the, the dual uh, characters thing. Like you have, like, you design two characters at the start. I think do you eventually have to lock one of them because yeah, you yeah. sort of pick from the two. Like the whole um, story setup is that it's two characters that are trained in a certain martial art or a certain style. Um, and then you do the first few missions, you're sort of alternating between the two. Um, but the setup is awesome. Like it's this sort of 1600s Japan setup. It's the Tokugawa period or the Tokugawa Shogunate. Um, and it's all about like, um, it seems like it's all about sort of gov overthrowing a government resistances. Um, and then this sort of like shadow organization that is also doing stuff in the background. Um, I think like as a store, as a propellant, I wasn't expecting that much upfront. Yeah. Um, and it, it does set you off well, like from the very beginning. This is why I think it's way more indebted to a Ghost of Tsushima mm. than it is a Dark Souls because the story drive here is like, it's right at the forefront. Like yeah. it's, you've got RPG style choices even early on uh, that mm. that apparently, you know, changed the outcome of certain story beats. Even like you said, you know, locking in one of those protagonists mm -hmm. changes changes things as you go forward. And I think Team Ninja over the past few games have always low key been doing um, story cutscenes in particular, mm. like amazingly. The choreography on display, mm. the, the way they're shot have been amazing. But the way those games like Warlong was set up, like there was a lot of story in those titles, but it was it was more about the combat. It was more about like going through and leveling up your character and specking your character. And the stories were good, but mm -hmm. it, it really almost felt at odds with the gameplay itself. Whereas here, they're way more entwined. Like mm. um, it, like the story itself is, is set during a fascinating period that I didn't know anything about where mm -hmm. you've kind of got Japan coming into clashing with kind of like Western civilization to where you've got um, American sort of settlers, you've got British settlers and there's like a clash of kind of cultures there. So you mm -hmm. go to these cities that are a mix of, you know, um, like London style architecture and, you know, this more classic Japanese architecture mm -hmm. that, you know, you're more used to in other samurai games and stuff. And that to me has been really interesting and I wasn't expecting that to be the conflict, mm -hmm. but that um, at least again, early on is interestingly being woven into some of the story decisions and the people you meet. Mm -hmm. So you can, you know, side with people who are pro this merger of cultures and yes. want to kind of sign a treaty that gives like the American powers say more control over Japan, or you can side with the more rebellious sides um, who are trying to, you know, expel these foreigners, as mm -hmm. they say, and, and, and get them out. And they've all got like interesting wrinkles. I'm interested to see what they do with that story, because like I said, previously cutscene direction has been a real talent of Team Ninjas, mm -hmm. but story-wise, um, sometimes the scale is kind of uh, gotten a bit too big for them, I yeah. think. So I'm interested to see how they handle that and if it's done well mm -hmm. um, going forward, but at least at this early stage, it's definitely an interesting foundation and way more story focused than I was expecting. It to yeah, be. that's definitely where I'm at, where I was like, oh, like, this opening cutscene is phenomenal. This opening setup is awesome. Like I love all these characters so far. Um, I need to play way more of it. My life has been Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. But yeah. Once I'm allowed to uh, get it from underneath that thing, I'll get back on Rise of the Ronin. But um, I think it's such a strong showing for something that is, um, a lot of people have been talking about it. It's been shown off like over a year or so. Um, but I think at the minute, just the way that like people are trying to keep up with so many releases, like 2024 has been like relentless so far. Yeah. Um, I'm curious how this is going to sell. Like, I feel like there's not necessarily buzz around it, but it's like, it's a known name. It's weird, right? Uh, because every time we do a video, especially the ones where we were kind of slagging it off pre-release. I was just, you know, yeah, you can only not necessarily that see at the time. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I saw a lot of comments, people being like, I can't wait for Rise of mm. the Ronin. And I always thought like, why? And now I've played it, <laughs> I kind of understand. It uh, makes a lot of sense. You know, the, there's, there's a lot in this game. There's a lot that's familiar, uh, but there's a lot that's just like really well done. Mm -hmm. Like I was talking about the characters there in the story. Um, it's funny because you mentioned Final Fantasy. This has a bond system that, yes. is, that, it, that it really um, 
throws at you where you're creating bonds with the area itself by, you know, liberating areas or petting those cats, <laughs> which gives you like, you know, uh, more discounts and, and, and stuff like that, more mm -hmm. icons on the map. But you also have bonds with characters, which I've not messed around too much with, but mm -hmm. you essentially, um, just before the end of the preview, get a home base. And that home base allows you to bring characters over, call them over for a drink, and you can talk <laughs> with them, you can give them gifts to get your bond up, and I imagine that's gonna play more into the story mm -hmm. uh, because obviously those characters can belong to different factions. So there's, there's a lot in there, yeah. way more than I expected there to be. And I'm having a fun time. I can't wait to play more of it. I hope it manages to sustain this level throughout because mm -hmm. if I have had one major criticism of mm -hmm. Team Ninja's games, it's that I always love them to start and then I kind of never finished them because <laughs> previously, Warlong, Neo 2, I always felt like they were a bit bloated, mm. a bit elongated, and they got a bit repetitive in recycling areas and mm. recycling encounters as time goes on. Mm. I really hope this avoids that. But I, I guess I won't know until I'm at the end. We should um, touch on difficulty as well, because they're kind of becoming known for it. Like Neo 2 especially was like a brutally hard game. I found Neo 1 to be a lot more like approachable. I got I got, I got through way more, like three quarters of Neo 1. Um, but Neo 2 got a bit of a reputation for being quite cheap in regards to characters just jumping out of a tree and killing you or whatever. Yeah. Um, and then um, Wo Long had bits of that. It's very Soulsian. But this, like, how's difficulty in this? It scales it back. It doesn't right. have those kind of gotcha moments mm. as much as uh, the previous game. Games. It's it's definitely aiming to be more accessible. Like I said, you've got um, difficulty options this time yeah. around, which really helps. That said, you can still kind of play it like a Neo game in a way. I'm playing it on the hardest difficulty, mm. and that definitely demands you learn the animations of enemies, mm. know how to counter properly, know when to block, know when to dodge, um, and get the most out of the combat system that way. But it's, it's more approachable and more like Jedi Survivor, where if you want that experience, mm -hmm. it's there. And if you just kind of want to go in and, and hack arms and heads off I and do. look cool <laughs> and doing it, you have that option as well. So I think if, yeah, if, if you're a, a ride or die Neo fan or a ride or die Warlong fan, this isn't necessarily mm -hmm. like that, but it doesn't get rid of what made those games great completely. You can still have something approaching that mm -hmm. kind of hard, difficult experience if you want, but also you can just indulge in the combat. And I think the combat itself is way more acrobatic. Like you could be jumping off dudes, coming down with mm. swipes. You've got the glider, which you can see in all of the previews. Like there's, there's so many options at your disposal. Like you can even play the game non-lethally if you right, want. Okay. Like if you, if you, there are some missions that, um, you know, ask you to limit civilian casualties or whatever, and you get t taught <sighs> earlier on that if you, if you go unarmed or if you use wooden swords mm. or whatever wooden weapon you have, mm. like you just knock people out and I'm like, that's interesting. That's this what I wasn't like, expecting either. I got a Tenchu vibe from it um, near the beginning. And it, it, I loved that whole run of games, like the Tenchu games, the Shinobido games, like different mission goals, different mission rewards based on being um, non-lethal, different ways to play or whatever it is. Um, and different things that are like marking you in terms of like how stylish was that kill yeah. um, or that um, approach to an assassination. I think there's like, there's a legacy of those old school like ninja games that yes. like this could easily tap into. And like, I just, I love the immediacy of it. I think that was the main thing that I took away from it was like, oh, this is just so immediate. And it's like, I said, I've missed it. You know what it feels like? And I mean this, it's, it, might, it might sound derogatory, but it, it's not meant to be. It's meant to be a compliment. Mm. We've been talking so much over the past few weeks about, you know, the state that AAA gaming is in right now. Mm -hmm. And you know, there's that meme where it's like, I want shorter games with worse graphics and I'm not kidding. Yep. Um, this seems like it's going to be a long game because like I said, I've already put way more hours in than the guide even suggested it would take me to get to that point. Mm -hmm. But um, this kind of is, I think, what a lot of people have been asking for in terms of, it's not the prettiest game you'll ever see. It's not the um, most revolutionary in terms of, you know, technology. It's mm. not necessarily gonna sell PS5s off trailers alone, but it is a solid game. Yes. It is a reliable game. It is a polished game. It is a fun game, mm -hmm. first and foremost. And I think, yeah, if you're that kind of gameplay forward gamer, mm -hmm. like you'll get a lot out of it because it's more concerned with um, the satisfaction that comes with stabbing a guy with a bayonet and then shooting his head off with a musket <laughs> than it is about ear cartilage. And that's coming from a guy who Ugh. loves 
Ear cartilage and video games. I'm a guy that hates ear cartilage <laughs> and video games. I have to get all the ray traces away from me. I uh, I love something that just prioritizes gameplay above all else. And you can, like you said, you can tell the budget went into making sure it plays well um, and not worrying about the whether the pupils dilate because the room went brighter yeah. or whatever it is uh, or darker. I um, yeah, I'm glad that it's something that is just um, wearing its influences on its sleeve and then adding the extra little layer to it. That's it. It is wearing its influences on the on its sleeve. And if you've seen previews for this game and you think it looks like this, it looks like that. Nothing in the game is going to convince you otherwise, but man, like, I think this is a real step up for those developers. Mm. Like I said, I really rated those previous games, but this just seems like, to me, more of the complete package so far, but it is very early doors, mm. and maybe I'll change my tune uh, when, I, when I come <laughs> to the end of the game. But right now, cautiously very optimistic mm -hmm. and... Uh, yeah, I, I'm, 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 I can't believe how surprised I am, man. I thought this game was going to be very mid. Oh, yeah, 